Hi all, let's talk about slowly changing dimension in SSIS. It is one of the important transformation in SSIS. It will help us to update the old records and insert the new records into the target system. So this will help us to compare the data between the source and target system. So based on the comparison results, so it may insert and it may update based on the comparison results. So if it is a new record, it is going to insert. If it is an old record, it is going to update in the so uh, target system. Ideally, so we use this slowly changing dimension while filling the data warehouse. So data warehouse filling is will be done with the help of the slowly changing dimension only. So there are some important uh, points we may need to know before going to do the practical in the SCD. So to work with the SCD, so we may need to specify the one business column. So business column must be selected. Second one. So attributes behavior we may need to tell. So when I say attribute behavior means that so do you want to perform SCD type one or type two? You may need to specify that is mandatory and so source system and the target system need to be specified and SCD supports only RDBMS as a target system, but it takes anything as a source system and here. So there are three things you need to know in the SCD. First one is a fixed attribute. Second one is a changing attribute. Third one is a historical attribute. So when I say fixed attribute, that attribute is not going to change. Second one is a changing attribute. So it will help us to update the old records with the new record. In this changing attribute, we won't maintain the history of the old value. When we go to the third historical attribute, so it going to insert when whenever it identifies a updated record, it is going to insert a new record. So with a new value, but still you will be having a old value record. So you need to differentiate with a flag or you need to differentiate that old record and new record with a date or flag based on the requirement. So here in SCD, there are two types. So one is the SCD type one and SCD type two. So SCD type one is nothing but a changing attribute. So whenever we identify a change in the old record, it is going to update with a new value and it won't maintain history of the old value. So that is nothing but SCD type one. So when you go to SCD type two, it is nothing but a historical attribute. So let us say yesterday employee means last month employee salary is some uh, particular amount. So this month due to the bonus or due to the uh, increments, the salary might have increased to some particular amount. So when you go to SCD type two, so you will be having so end date for the old salary and starting date for the new salary. So that is very important in the uh, warehouse maintenance. So in all the scenarios, most of the scenarios, so we'll be going with a SCD type two only. So SCD type one is very, very rare scenarios. So now let me show you how to implement SCD practically in the SSIS. So before going to show you that, let me show you what is the data I'm going to take as an input. See, I have a data with four columns, ID employee, employee name, location and email. So here I have four columns and around some six rows. So this is the data. So now let me take you to the destination as well. So I have a, a table with the name of SCD3, which are having ID employee, employee name, location, email, start date and end date. So these started and end dates, which will be helping me to identify what is the old record and what is the new record. So if I go with a SCD type one, then I don't need start date and end date. But if I go with a SCD type two, I need it because I'm going to maintain the history of the old record as well. So that time I need to know. So when is the starting date of the record and when is the ending date and what is the current value which is running in the system. So this is my target. Now let me go to the SSDT SQL Server Data Tools. It is an empty package. Let me take a so data flow task as usual. So here data flow task configuration. So let me take a, a plot file source that is my source is a plot file. Let me take that plot file source. Okay, so let me configure that. So let me click on new. So this is there in the F drive SSIS folder.
yeah so scd yeah mp so let me uh, take you to the preview so this is the data i have let me click on okay so let me click on okay so here that data is coming into the uh, from plat file let me convert the id employee because my here is a sql server destination and that is a integer value let me convert that id employee okay so let me convert id employee into some uh, let me make it as a employee id so to, to differentiate it okay so i'm going to put as a some four byte or uh, two byte signed integer click on okay okay now let me take you let me take the slowly changing dimension okay so now let me drag and drop the slowly changing dimension so let me connect this yeah okay so now let me start configuring the slowly changing dimension let me double click on it so once i double click on it i will be getting some information window here let's click on next so there here i need to specify a destination table okay let me click on new so my let me enable a connection here so my connection is dot and uh, database name is a uh, sample test connection yeah let me see where is my yeah right click on okay yeah click on okay and what is the table scd 3 cd3 yeah, here if you see so these are all the source columns are this and the destination columns are this okay now so here id employee let me make it as a employee id okay yeah so this is the one so now i am planning to make it this is a business key okay so as mentioned so one business key must be required while working with them slowly changing dimensions i am keeping as a employee id as a business key now so as we talked about uh scd type 1 and scd type 2 so and one more thing is let me make it as let me map email so this is small change in the email spelling this email and this email okay now so and i am going to yeah, what is this okay so let me see this is a employee acid type is three string here it is string yeah it is string let me go with it then i can i'll go with that only with this i don't need data conversion here id employee is fine okay so now that's fine so here this is how i am mapping it okay now i am uh, other keys are not required for me and here this is a place where i need to say so what is a uh, scd type 1 and type 2 so here changing attribute is nothing but a type 1 historical attribute is nothing but a type 2 so let me make it as a changing attribute first type 1 so let me make it as a employee name so i am not going to keep it as a fixed attribute okay so this is nothing but a scd type 1 so let me go with it or let me configure SCD type 2 also here itself. So let me make it as email as a historical attribute. So now in the same example, so we are covering SCD type 1 and SCD type 2. So when I change employee name here, it should not maintain a history record. It should override with a new value. But when I go with the email, so whenever I change in the uh, source email, it should create a history record. Okay. Let me click on next. Okay. So change all the matching records include yeah that's fine next so here we have a, a date records so how to maintain that let me use start and end dates as we discussed so either you need to maintain a flag or you need to maintain either start date and end date so let me select start date as start date end date as end date and variable to set the date values is container start time okay you can next yeah that is next you can finish okay see one initially we have one box but it, now it turned into a multiple transformations and sources and destinations okay now let me run this okay so this is the first time we are running it so there is no change in the data even let me run this i don't have a data it's empty table let me run this okay so now if you see I have a six records start date having some value and there is no uh, value in the end date now let me go to the uh, scd table scd data and let me change employee name so instead of tqs let me put it as a abc 
a b c so this is nothing but a std type 1 i just saved that let's run again let me stop this and let's run again yeah once you run this so it it implements see there is no new records here okay so they will be having only changing attribute that is nothing but a updated record only and if you see there is no count is there in the arrows now let me go to the table and if you run this yeah, you will be having only six records and here you cannot identify what is the old value of the employee id six okay so this is nothing but a scd type one now let me go to the scd type two example so here there i already specified as a historical attribute let me change the value here so here instead of kita at gmail.com i'm going to make it as a abc okay so i change the employee id now the expectation here is so whenever the change happens in the old record it should end the new record or it should create a new record with the old new value and it should end the old record when i say end is nothing but so here i should be getting one value in the end date and i will be getting a new record with a employee id as 6 now let me run this yeah it is running now again so here if you see here new record is coming here this is a new flow is coming when you go here one row one row is identified if you see here this is how it is inserting now let me go to the sql server there yeah you will be having six with employee id six you will be having two records with the same name abc and with difference is a email id kita and abc and the old record is ended with a particular date and time now based on the end date you need to say what is the latest record and what is the old record so in all the real time scenarios so we'll be going with them only scd type 2 scd type 1 is very very rare scenario so whenever you need to update a old record with a new value then you'll go with scd type 1 so when if you don't want to go with them if you don't want to update the old value then you can you have to go with them scd type 2 and the next behavior is a change fixed attribute so that fixed attribute we may not use in the real time so whenever I say the particular column is a fixed attribute is nothing but so whenever change happens in a particular column so that time my package is going to fail that is nothing but a fixed attribute so this is how you need to work with a slowly changing dimensions and here scd type 2 is very important so that's it thank you for watching please subscribe and watch for our videos